all. We'll be starting with the fourth module. In the start of the module, we actually discuss about certain good practices that should be followed when we design a schema or a database. So that it's a duty of the database designer to design a schema. We have seen certain good practices that should be followed. Here we will be seeing some other practices that should be followed when designing a good schema. The first one being taking care of semantics of the attributes. So what we mean by that is like when you give uh, attribute names, it should be like meaningful names. For example, we had seen like in the table employee, the names given were meaningful like SSN, first name, last name, middle initial, birth date. So from the name itself, things should be clear. We should be able to interpret what that attribute means. The second thing being, we should not mix different attributes of different entities together. So in the common example we discussed, we had seen that employee table consisted of only employee details. We had separate tables for department and a separate table for project information. We didn't actually combine all the three information into a single table. So keeping information of different entities in different relation is also a good practice. And how can you actually connect between these entities or different tables by using foreign keys. So that's the main advantage foreign keys have. The foreign keys are used to actually link between two tables or two entities. So in that sense, foreign keys are important. So first database design guideline is regarding the semantics of attributes. The next one being as far as possible, we should always try to reduce the redundant values in tuples. What we mean by redundant values, repeating values. If there are repetitions occurring multiple times and if there is a way to avoid that, we should go for that. Let's try to understand this example by taking these two relations. First consider this relation. This is a relation consisting of two tables. Like we have two tables, we have kept two tables, one for employee and another for department. In employee, we have e-name, SSN, birth date, address and department number, which is the foreign key referring to this department table. And it is the primary key in this table. So in department, we have D-name, D-number and manager SSN. So we'll be uh, discussing this example to see a lot many of factors that can affect a schema design. Now consider, actually these keeping schema in this two separate relation is a good practice. We'll see why. Now imagine if we were to combine these two relations and keep the information as a single relation. Now actually if you take a natural join of these two relations that is you can uh, combine these two using D number. See D number field is common over here and over here. They have the same name. So you can actually take natural join of these two tables. If you take a natural join of these two tables this is the result you will be getting. So E name SSN birth date address D number is there and from here D name and manager SSN is there. Now we will be seeing why this schema or this relation, this combined relation EMP DEPT is not a good relation when compared to keeping these two relations as separate relations. Now imagine there are 1 lakh employees in the company. 1 lakh employees. So how many rows would be there or how many tuples would be there? There will be 1 lakh tuples. Tuples is the other name for rows. So 1 lakh tuples would be there in this table. Also in this employee table, there should be 1 lakh entries as there are 1 lakh empl employees. Now imagine there are only 3 departments in the company. Just 3 departments. So how many entries would be there over here? 3 for D name, 3 for D number and each department has a manager and his assistant, 3 manager assistants. So 3 plus 3 plus 3, only 9 entries are coming over here. So if we are keeping this as a single table, imagine the complexity. The 1 lakh rows coming over here and for each row we should have a value for d name and the manager assistant right so if we were keeping this as a separate table we just had three d names that is if there are only three departments we had three d names 
corresponding three D numbers and corresponding three manager assistant values. So combining three plus three plus three nine values. Now if we are storing the D name and manager assistant for all the employees and if there are one lakh employees, there will be one lakh D names and one lakh manager assistant values. That is two lakh because we had to repeat the D name for each employee and the ma corresponding department manager. This is not the manager for that employee, it is the manager of that particular department for each employee. These two fields had to be repeated 1 lakh times. So 1 lakh plus 1 lakh, 2 lakh additional entries we are making. If we are uh, instead of having just 9 entries over here, we are having 2 lakh entries by going for such a schema. So whenever possible, we should be trying to reduce the number of entries because it saves the storage. So using this example, we saw how we can actually reduce the redundant values. So it is a good practice to have a schema something like this and just have a reference to this table using the foreign key. Hope you understood this example. We will be using the same example as a continuation of the second point. That is the second point is reducing the redundant, redundant values in tuples and update anomalies. Let's see what we mean by an insertion, deletion and update anomaly. Coming back to the example, consider the same example. So instead of having two separate schemas like this for employee and department, if we had a single schema that is the result of a natural join of these two. Let's take the example when an insertion occurs. Consider this example, listen to this carefully because I have to explain it using this figure. You will have to use a bit of imagination over here to fill up the values to understand the example. Imagine the company has recruited about 100 employees and they, the, the employees have not yet been assigned to any particular department. So in that case, if you, if you are following this particular schema, there would be 100 new entries coming over here, right, because 100 employees are added. But since they are not allotted, allocated to a particular department, the D name value and D manager assistant value would have to be null. They have to be null because we have not assigned them to any department. So 100 plus 100, 200 values have to be null. So that is an insertion anomaly. Now what if we were keeping this as two separate schemas. Let 100 employees be added over here. The D number value over here can be null. Whenever they, they are assigned to a department, we will be getting values for D number. Right. So we can avoid that particular anomaly. So insertion anomaly is when we add new entries to such a schema, many of the values have to be null. So that's the disadvantage we are having. Let's see what happens with a deletion anomaly. In a deletion anomaly, suppose we try to delete an employee who happens to be the last employee of that particular department. Since we are maintaining it as a single table in this manner, there are employees over here and this employee happens to be the last employee of the department. Keep that in mind. So when we actually delete this particular employee, that particular department is also getting deleted. So that is an example for deletion anomaly. Now if it was two separate tables like this, that particular employee could be deleted. The department remains over there. Even though there are no employees belong to the department, the department would be still there. Maybe later on new employees might be added to that department. But if we were keeping it as a single table like this and that employee was deleted from here, the value corresponding to that employee, that is the department he belongs to and the manager and the D number would also be deleted. And if that department happened to be the, or that employee happened to be the last employee of the department, that department entry itself is deleted. Okay, hope you understood that. Next is regarding the update anomaly. In update anomaly, let's take the same table as an example. Now imagine we are changing the manager for department number 5. There are 1, 2, 
uh, departments like 1, 2 and 5. Imagine there are three departments 1, 2 and 5. And we are changing the manager for department 5. So if the tables were maintained like this uh, corresponding to department number 5 we just need to change one value over here. Just one value we had to change over here. Now what if things were maintained like this. Now imagine there are three departments. There are a total of 1 lakh employees. Take an example at least 30,000 employees belong to department 5. So we would have to change 30,000 entries of that particular five department number 5 the corresponding manager assistant values we would have to change for that 30,000 entries. So that is the disadvantage we have by going for this particular table. So if it was this case we just have to change one value over here. Got it? So that is the advantage of maintaining things as two separate tables and referring to each other using a foreign key. Hope that is clear. Going to the next point reducing null values. In the second point we dealt with reducing the redundant or repeating values. Third point of a good database design discusses reduce null values whenever possible. Now what is the disadvantage with null values? We had seen how a null value can occur in the first module. Like there can be value uh, that does not exist that exists but user has left it null so there can be different cases when a value can be null. Now what are the disadvantage with null values is that one is space wastage is there. Another main disadvantage is like when we take aggregate operations like count, sum, average and all we don't know how to account for null values. Should we count them? Should we, uh, how, how, if we take an average should we consider that into the average? All those doubt arises. So th those are the disadvantage with null values. Now imagine a case Coming back to the same example, the combined table, in this, this uh, the employee details and all this. Now consider, out of the 1 lakh employees, uh, only like say 15%, that is 15,000 employees have an office for them and have a corresponding office number. A office number corresponding to the office they are in. Only 15,000 out of the 1 lakh employees have an office number. So if we were to add a column like office number over here. If we were to add a column, just look at the pointer. If we were to add a column like office number over here. Actually 85,000 employees would have this value null. Because only 15,000 employees have that value. Office number. So only 15,000 entries would be there. The rest 85,000 would be left null. So if such a situation arises, it's a good practice like form a separate table, say EMP offices and corresponding to the, uh, say we are taking this SSN value and since only 15,000 of the employees have an office number, take their SSN value which is the primary key in this table, this is the SSN value and store the office number. So in this separate table, we'll be having 15,000 ESSN values and their corresponding 15,000 office numbers. So 15,000 plus 15,000, 30,000 entries and none of them is null also instead of 85,000 null values over here. So if majority of the values are null, only few SSN or few primary key values have that corresponding value, take it as a separate table. So that's another good practice of reducing null values. And the final guideline is disallowing generation of spurious tuples. Now this is a confusion, confusing term. What do you mean by spurious tuples? To, spurious tuples means tuples that actually does not exist in a table. Now how can this spurious tuple arise in a table? Let's see. Now consider these two relations. New relation. EMP location. There is employee name and the corresponding project location he works in and these two combines to form the primary key of this table. Consider another table employee project that stores SSN the project number that SSN works on hours project name and project location. Now we will see this schema is a bad schema. Why we will see? 
because it leads to something known as spurious tuples. We'll try to understand what spurious tuples is. Listen to this carefully. Just have a look at the schema, these two schema, and listen to the example I am trying to convey. Imagine having an employee like XYZ. There's an employee coming over here, XYZ. His name is XYZ and he belongs to, say, location Mumbai. XYZ belongs to Mumbai. Now, in when coming to this, and if you try to join these two tables using a natural join, they would be joined using P location because P location has the same name. So if you join these two tables, it would be joined using P location. Now, XYZ belongs to Mumbai. Look, imagine there's an entry over here with SSN value 1. The SSN value of the employee over here is 1. But imagine this 1 is not XYZ. Okay. This 1, SSN 1 is not XYZ. He's some other employee. But his P location is Mumbai. The SSN value 1 has P location Mumbai. He's not XYZ. Over here, XYZ has P location Mumbai. So when you actually join this, since a Mumbai is over there, here and here, these two columns would be joined. That, that is SSN corresponding to 1 would get the name XYZ and the details, you will get a wrong details corresponding to all this. Actually, such an employee does not exist because one SSN 1 is not XYZ. XYZ had location Mumbai, 1 also had location Mumbai. In this, we are not storing the name. We are not storing the name of the employee. Look at this. We are just storing SSN value. So when we join these two tables, based on the location, two unrelated employees are being combined to form a new tuple. So such a tuple does not actually exist. We, cannot nev we can never have an employee with one over here and his name XYZ because XYZ has some other SSN value. So such spurious tuples, that is spurious tuples means tuples that originally, originally does not exist. Some random tuples are generated because of this bad schema practice. Now we'll short, we'll just see what was the bad practice over here. We have always seen whenever we combine two tables, always combine using the foreign key. So the primary key over here is ename and p location. What was the foreign key over here? Just p location. We should have had ename also over here. Ename and p location should have been the foreign key over here. If so, this problem of spurious tuples would not have occurred. Okay. Just look at this example and try to understand what we just discussed. So bad designs can lead to generation of spurious tuples and the solution would be use foreign keys to join two tables. When we join two tables using non-foreign keys, such non-existing tuples can be generated. Okay, So these four were the design guidelines we should follow when designing a schema. First one was semantics of the attributes. Second one being reducing the redundant values and update anomalies. We saw what insertion, deletion and update anomalies are. Reducing the null values, the third point. Fourth one is avoiding the generation of spurious tuples by having a good schema or using foreign keys to join tables. So these four were the good practices you should follow. Hope you understood all the four. Thank you.